Hello, this is Paul Check. Welcome back to my video blogs. I hope you enjoyed my series titled Tips on Breathing. I was going to get into this earlier, but I got into the breathing thing first. My subject today is a documentary that's making quite a buzz out there called What the Health. If you want to learn more about What the Health, you can go to whatthehealthfilm.com. If you search What the Health, I'm sure you can find it on a Google search or on places like Netflix or Amazon. And the documentary, if you haven't seen it, really goes heavy into promoting a vegetarian diet and is very antagonistic to meat and to farming and to a lot of things. I wanted to share this with you today. It was brought up to me by Troy Casey, the certified health nut, who is one of my students and friends and does a lot of work to promote things healthy to people. And he brought it up because he was concerned about how many people were believing it, including students of the Czech Institute. And since Troy brought it up, I have indeed have had a number of students uh, talk to me about it, ask my opinion about it. And I think it's probably worth watching if you want to see uh, what they're saying, but also worth watching so you can take some of the things I'm going to share with you today in my commentary about that so that you can watch it hopefully with a more balanced perspective because like any documentary that's well produced, it can cause people to start jumping on bandwagons and I'd like to point out some of the things that we need to be very conscious of that are not brought up in the film. So first I'm going to start by giving the film some compliments because I like to do things in a balanced way. One, as the film points out, corporations are dangerous. It looks into places like the American Heart Association, the American Di Diabetes Association. If I remember right, they did look into issues with the American Cancer Association. And they did mention the FDA. I can tell you right from my own experience that these organizations are really nothing but uh, corporate entities that are set up to create the illusion of health and the illusion of the interest in finding a cure for cancer and all this type of stuff. And they are backed, as the film shows, by a lot of corporations that are extremely dangerous and destructive to the planet and to people. So I give it a, a, a good plus for highlighting and exposing a lot of these corporations that people trust to take care of them. And if we get into the vaccination issue, you can study Vaxxed and other documentaries and find out that the CDC was also caught doing a cover-up and knew they were damaging a lot of people. And the list just goes on. So we're at a time now where we really have to start taking responsibility for ourselves, making decisions, and functioning as a democracy, which unfortunately is dangerous in what looks like a democratic society, but really is turning into something much more like a fascist society where your rights are being taken away, freedom of speech is being taken away, and you look at the Patriot Act that George Bush Jr. signed in due to the 9-11 event, and it basically takes away most of your rights, and many people are getting put in jail for speaking their opinions about things that uh, you know we need to know about and resisting dangerous movements. So we've all got to start being more conscious and as I go through this critique today, I want you to remember we don't really have a government anymore. We have a corporate headquarters, and it doesn't really matter what president you vote for because all of them are really just expressions of different corporate interests, and it's really not a presidential candidacy. It's who got, who's got the most money and the most power to manipulate the public's opinion through the use of media and other tactics. And I think... The fact that Donald Trump is president is a really good example of exactly that. Next, it encourages people to eat a cleaner diet and more raw food, which is wise for most people. Indeed, eating a cleaner diet is wise for everybody, unless you're already on a very clean diet, and eating as much raw food as your body 
can comfortably digest and process is also a good idea. And as you get healthier, you'll find you can eat more raw food. And you'll also pro probably find, if you've ever explored this or worked as a therapist like I do, that not everybody can just jump onto an all raw food diet without feeling very, very uncomfortable. And many of them will not stick to it because of that. And we also need to remember that although raw food is very good for us, there is a specific reason for cooking food and a reason we've been doing it for thousands of years. And cooking food does things like soften fiber and it makes certain nutrients more available than you can, uh, than raw food uh, in certain instances. So there's a, a positive and a negative to pretty much everything. And it's really all about paying attention to what your body needs, which is the basis of my holistic health teachings and my holistic lifestyle coaching program. So from that perspective, the movie does a great job. The points that I have of concern, one, they talk about diabetes and they cite a lot of research saying that it comes from eating saturated fats and too much animal flesh and that it has nothing to do with sugar and they even show white sugar being porn, poured in the film and various experts and doctors saying that it has nothing to do with carbs and that, that carbs don't make people fat. Well, I've been doing this work for 32 years and I've worked with a lot of diabetics and I have used the very system that I call primal pattern uh, diet typing, which is a my own variation of metabolic type, metabolic typing or metabolic uh, diet typing, and have helped a lot of people balance their blood sugar and significantly reduce their need for insulin through the use of healthy, high quality fats, things like coconut oil, high quality organic meats, and avocado and the use of proper healthy oils for the body and getting the ratio of fats and proteins relative to carbohydrates balanced out. Now, it's kind of wild for me that they're making these claims because I've worked with a number of diabetics and in fact my brother is a type 1 diabetic and you can literally watch someone eat something with a lot of sugar in it whether it be candy or soda pop and now some of my clients have got these onboard monitoring systems that tell them like real time and you can just watch the the uh, blood sugar levels go up like crazy yet they're saying that in this movie that it has nothing to do with carbs or sugar which i think is a a very very odd tactic and it goes to prove that you can find experts on any side of an argument on almost anything. For example, if you simply research the issue of cold showers, cold baths, or cold water therapy, you'll find piles of people at all various levels of expertise from morons all the way to PhD giving you the benefits of it, yet you'll find the same span of people from moron to expert telling you why you shouldn't do it. Well, the answer is you're going to run into this no matter what you look into if you look deep enough and that's a great gift because it's important for each of us to stop relying on external authorities be it church authorities or religious authorities political authorities diet authorities any of that and pay attention to what's happening in our own lives and what we are creating and at this point, we have to be very careful with science because scientists have become modern prostitutes and they're on most of them. One study I looked at said that about 75% of all the scientists in the world at this time are on the payroll of large corporations. And if they don't get the results the corporation wants, they either redo the statistics or redo the study or they get fired. So we have got to start paying attention to the things that we create through our own choices. And that doesn't mean you don't listen to wise people, but it means that you pay attention to whether or not what the wise people say works for you or not. And when something works for you, it may not work forever. Just like veganism and vegetarianism can be a very, very powerful tool for detoxifying the body, 
for bringing in more nutrient variety, for helping people heal from diseases. But interestingly, in my experience, a lot of the people that healed from diseases using vegan and vegetarian approaches actually were eating too much meat to begin with and were eating almost everything from commercial sources. Then they're telling us that diabetes is more about the meat and the fat, but they're not mentioning the fact that if you go to any supermarket and look for the ending OSE, such as sucrose, dextrose, which means sugar, you will find that they're putting sugar in meat like crazy. It's in bacon, it's in sandwich meats, it's in cold cuts, it's all over the place. Why? Because it's addictive and it's cheap, relatively speaking. It's also been identified by Candace Pert, author of the book Molecules of, an Emo of Emotion and a famous biochemist, as something that should be scheduled as a class one drug. It's highly addictive, it's dangerous, and it should not be sold. But just like all these American Heart, American Cancer, American Dietetics associations are sellouts for corporations, the sugar industry is a huge, powerful industry. How powerful? I'll point that out to you in just a minute. So, as I said, processed sugar should be a class one drug. The sugar industry is very powerful. And how dangerous are these large corporations? Well, dangerous enough to be able to, A, sponsor the Olympics. McDonald's sponsoring the Olympics? God, come on. When I saw that, I totally uh, just lost all faith in any concept of an Olympic committee whatsoever. I mean, all you gotta do is watch Super Size Me and that, that should be enough to straighten most of you out. But what we've got now is we've got large corporate interests who are sponsoring Olympics. And we've got, I'll never forget the day I was working in New Zealand and they had just built a new Olympic committee there. I walked in after working out, sat down in the cafe and there was pamphlets from Nestle on every table in the cafe that started off by saying, did you know that sugar is an important part of a well-balanced diet? I'm like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. The Nestle was sponsoring the New Zealand Olympic Center and they were promoting sugar and packaged processed crap. Nestle is a large food processing fact manufacturer and First of all, I haven't met an athlete yet unless I trained them or someone that really knows what they're doing that even knows what a balanced diet is, let alone mothers bringing their kids in there. And to promote that kind of stuff to kids and to have an Olympic association aligned with it is absolutely ridiculous. I've worked at and done work in the Danish Olympic Center. When I first walked in there, they had vending machines full of all sorts of crap. They had cigarettes for the athletes and there was people in the, in the diet department there. I heard several times from athletes encouraging athletes to drink pasteurized milk and chocolate milk after their training programs, which is just absolute silliness to the very core. So we need to start paying close attention. People do not get diabetes overnight. They don't get obese overnight. You don't get cancer overnight. These are things you got to work at. You really got to do something regularly that is a threat to the system for quite some period of time. So what I'm saying is you're watching yourself in the mirror. You don't all of a sudden wake up one day 60 pounds overweight. You don't all of a sudden get cancer unless you're in a very unique environment like having chemical toxicity from working in some kind of a factory. There are cases like that or a fireman who's running into burning buildings full of toxic chemicals. So there's a high rate of cancer amongst firemen and I've worked with plenty of them. So there are certain types of cancer you can get from exposure, but most of them are really uh, the effects of and expressions of chronic illnesses that take a lot of lifestyle abuse to acquire. So we have to pay attention to that. Then we've got Monster and Red Bull who have just put piles of money into getting athletes on all this stuff, wearing the hats, wearing the clothes. You go to Las Vegas and my God, it, you'd think it was owned by Monster. This is dangerous stuff that we should not being, be allowing 
into the influence of our children and those of us that know better should be standing up and staking our claim and saying, look, we shouldn't let companies like this sponsor Olympics, sponsor athletes. We shouldn't be encouraging child athletes to drink Monster and Red Bull and eat sugar and all this kind of crap. So <clears throat> the, the whole onus of diabetes being primarily caused by fat and animal meat is a very, very deceiving tactic to use. And as a guy who's been in this line of work for 32 years, I can tell you I have far, far more problems with people eating too much sugar-based stuff and processed foods, including processed animal foods with sugar in them, than I do ever have people eating organically raised free-range meats or wild-caught fish. In fact, I don't know anyone that eats organically raised meat and wild-caught fish and naturally grown vegetables from an organic source or even a clean source that may not be certified organic that ever has gotten diabetes. And if it did happen, the first thing I would look for is chemical toxicity in their system to see what's disrupting their ability to regulate blood sugar and hormones effectively. So. There's those issues. So thank you for joining me for part one of this What the Health two-part commentary. I've enjoyed sharing with you today. In our next session, I'll get into factory farming and those types of issues and talk about some of the things that we can do about it and uh, hopefully leave you with a little inspiration to pay more attention and manage your, your money because that's what you vote with and uh, see what we can do together to make the world a more beautiful place and a safer place for our children moving forward. See you in part two.